So good afternoon, everybody. Thank you, thank you all very, very much for, uh, for coming out today to, uh, to this special occasion as we pay tribute to former superintendent school of David Trump and David Rock. And to your wife Judy and your son Greg and his wife Lee, welcome to all of you too. Um, I'm very, very honored um, to welcome all of you today. Um, I think this is a special moment for all of us. It's particularly special for me. Um, David, I want to publicly acknowledge and thank you for taking a chance with me back in 2003 and hiring me then as the, no, you that? Yeah, 2003 as the principal of North Reading High School. And I, I learned an awful lot from you. I was very fortunate to, um, to have worked for you for quite some time and I feel like I learned a lot. And I, I owe, owe an awful lot to you, so thank you very much. I'm very, very touched that you're here today and we pay tribute to you. Um, like a lot of us, educators, um, those that have had the good fortune of knowing you, David, we gather this afternoon to honor your commitment to education and your vision for this beautiful secondary school campus that has already served to enrich the lives of those students who have been educated here and will continue to do so for the thousands more who will have a wonderful opportunity to learn in this state-of-the-art institution of learning for the next several decades. For those of us who were intimately involved in the multi-year process of bringing what, about what times seemed something so intangible that it was often difficult to grasp, the realization of this beautiful middle high school is something that stems from a vision that you had many years ago. And it was your persistence, some might call it stubbornness, that ultimately the community embraced. And this was bringing together two schools into one. It does not take one very long to come to the realization as you wander this beautiful campus that you were correct, David, and we thank you for that. The Distance Learning Lab, which is being named in your honor, is a learning space that serves to bridge a divide, to foster collaboration, and that allows students to connect and interact with other students and professionals across the country and around the world, thus broadening their horizons and promoting 21st century global learning. These interactions bring a real-world practical application to students' learning. These opportunities and exciting learning experiences would not have been possible without your vision. Students who did not attend this school and who have gone on to college or the workforce and have come back to see the school have marveled at the distance learning lab and expressed a significant jealousy that they were not able to attend this beautiful new school. This is indeed an enviable place to come to every day. I am so proud of this state-of-the-art facility, and I know that as a consequence of what happens in the middle high school, many, many people will be far better off. And it is your leadership that has brought us to this realization. You led the effort, and you rallied great support. You planted the seeds, and they grew in the years that followed. You demonstrated for this wonderfully supportive and caring community that there is no higher return on investment than the investment in public education. And the community clearly rose to the challenge. It is my hope, David, that you will find, if you have not already, great satisfaction knowing that perhaps your greatest accomplishment as an educator is having enabled the young people who have benefited from your vision to hold their heads high and take a special place on the path of life that reflects the ideals of the foundation that has been laid for them. And you did so with a cooperative spirit and a responsiveness of the people of North Reading to support the vision and encourage the best efforts in securing for our students the very best schools. You capitalized on the keen interest and pride that have long been a hallmark of North Reading to bring about the best possible educational facilities and learning opportunities for the students. And while the Distance Learning Lab is the space being dedicated in your honor, it really is the campus itself that stands as a testament to your caring and dedication and foresight. The gymnasiums, the science laboratories, the classrooms themselves, the Performing Arts Center, the Library Media Center, all serve to strengthen the quality of the educational and co-curricular experience that contributes significantly to the whole child. We thank you for this, David, and we pay honor to you today for all that you have provided to this fine community and its many students. I do want to acknowledge a few people that are also here to share this special occasion. It's wonderful that so many people have turned out, but I, I think it's very special and um, and fitting that uh, we have former Superintendent Kathy Willis, who is here. Kathy, where are you? Kathy, thank you for being here. And uh, former interim superintendent in North Freddie, Keith Mandel. Keith, thank you for being here, too. As well as the, the administrators of the district and just the community that's come out and supported you. So thank you. It's now my uh, pleasure to introduce our chairman of our school committee, Mr. Al Webster. It's always good 
following John because he always takes the straight and narrow road in his talks, and then he leaves it wide open for me and Mr. Venezia to follow. I'm just hoping that John and I, I'm, I'm just hoping that John and I say everything Jerry wanted to say, so when he gets up here, he's completely tongue-tied. <laughs> it's highly appropriate that we honor David by putting his name on the distance learning lab. Well, he had a lot of highlights in his 15-year stay in North Reading. I'm sure one of the biggest was his trip to China and then the return the Chinese education officials <coughs> took to North Reading. I still remember that night when David brought them to the school committee meeting in the old middle school in the horrific little library. And David was beaming, the Chinese officials were beaming. It was, it was a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity for them, for David, for us. So it's extremely appropriate because David was always interested in how people around the world learn and what they were doing. If they were doing something different that we could apply here in North Reading to improve how we learn. And he even actually brought back the idea of um, funding a Chinese uh, language class uh, section at the high school, which we approved about 10 years ago and still hasn't been funded, but it was a great idea and we push for it every year. So we will continue to push for that. Um, a little bit about David, for those of you who might not really know him, here's where I'm probably gonna get into trouble. I served on the school committee for approximately six years of his tenure here, and people often came up to me and noted how quiet and reserved he was in public. And they'd say, come on, what's he really like behind closed doors? My answer? He's the same, just a little more boring. But seriously, <laughs> but seriously, I'm sorry. David became superintendent of North Reading just as the implementation of significant ed reform began. And he did a masterful job leading this district through those challenging times. I give David much of the credit for putting the North Reading school system on the path that led it to being one of the best in the state today. Just a few of the key initiatives David championed were block scheduling at the high school, full day kindergarten, an expansion of integrated preschool, and expanded use of technology for teaching and learning. All things which we've pretty much fulfilled today. We're still expanding the teaching and learning. We're still trying to figure out how to make full day K free of charge. Um, but we have implemented a lot of those programs and there were a lot more. One of the key reasons, as John mentioned, we're standing here today is David's vision. For several years, we struggled over what direction to follow regarding the high school and the middle school. Jerry Venezia and I pushed long and hard for building a new high school and renovating the old one to serve as the middle school. David told us many times that wasn't a good plan, but as John said, he was persistent, he was stubborn, he was right. His, he believed in this combined campus and it's, it was definitely the way to go. But one interesting thing, and I, I spoke with Chuck, and I think Chuck has this 100% right, we had submitted a plan to build a new high school and we were rejected. And we were furious, David was more, more furious, and I think he wrote them a letter, he made phone calls. How could you reject North Reading High School? You've seen our school. And he was able to convince them to put us back on the list, and not only that, but to, instead of accepting just a high school plan, a combined plan, which Kathy Willis then took control of at, and Keith uh, in the interim, and, and pushed it through and got it done. So I, I think David's persistence and his charm in um, being able to convince the MSBA that we had to do this is why we're standing here today. Unfortunately, he left before we put a shovel in the ground, but he's been back several times during the construction process and to see the school. So here's where I get in trouble again. <laughs> Just a few notes to close. I was doing a little research for today and I came across the, ninth, the 2009 town report which always includes an annual report from the school department. And I actually did chuckle out loud when I read this paragraph, and I wondered if David had written it himself. It says the event with the biggest, and I'm not, I'm not lying, this is what was in the report. The event with the biggest impact on the North Reading Public Schools occurred on December 4th, 2009, when Dr. David Troughton, Troughton retired after 15 years as superintendent of schools. Although it is accepted by all that Dr. Troughton will never be replaced, the district does need a superintendent. <laughs> That's in the report. <laughs> you didn't write that. I didn't. Okay. No, I'm sure. <laughs> All right. In closing, I want to note that um, David was one of the most dedicated people with whom I've ever worked. All our superintendents have, have been and continue to be incredibly dedicated. It's an extremely difficult job that there's much more to it than meets the eye. And he's also one of the brightest, smartest people I've encountered in my life. You might even call him an intellectual. But, 
One thing about David that I will always remember is this, and it's something really important. Through it all, he was never able to completely eradicate that beautiful Massachusetts accent. Don't believe me? Just ask him about his trip to China. Congratulations, <laughs> David. When John Bernard first came to me and said there was a proposal to name the longest learning lab in memory of David, I said, oh my God, I don't know David had died. I'm so glad to see you. <laughs> Which is a great relief. It's a great relief. Um, as most people know, David has spent his entire career as an educator. And may, some people may not know that for a long period of time, he was a teacher in Linfield. Um, our arch enemies, <laughs> the people that we resent the most. I know Jeff is here too. From in spite of that, somehow he was hired here and not writing as a superintendent. So he really came in with one strike against him. And David, as Mel already mentioned, faced some real challenges here. He had to implement the Education Reform Act of 1993. He was hired in 1994. Uh, he was replacing a superintendent, Dr. O'Donoghue, who I believe was here for 24 years. And David had to come in and establish his own agenda, his own identity, uh, his own way of doing things. And that's not easy to do when you're replacing somebody who's been here for that long. He had to establish a new culture, really, in, in North Reading. And then David also faced the challenge of having a long-term problem with the schools, with the buildings, the infrastructure itself. And at that time, most of the schools were in disrepair, and they were only getting worse. Um, David did a great job, as Mel has already mentioned. Um, I did it. I was successful. <laughs> <laughs> David did a great job in implementing a strategic plan, enhancing and expanding curriculum, improving and increasing special education services, and hiring the best administrators and faculty. David also did conceive of the plan to have the middle school, high school with the common area project. Uh, and as Mel said, um, there were a lot of us that didn't believe in it because we thought it was too ambitious and too expensive. And to this day, we get blamed for it being too expensive <laughs> everywhere we go. And David probably he doesn't have to deal with it. Uh, but David's plan didn't include just the middle school, high school. He turned around and he had a plan starting all the way back in the mid-90s where he renovated the, the little school. And for the little school in the late uh, 1990s, early 2000s, he renovated the Hood School. And then he met his greatest challenge. And out of the political turmoil that surrounded the Batchelder School after years of infighting, David oversaw the renovation and the rebuilding of the Batchelder School. And in order to do that, he had a conceivable plan where he shipped about 450 students that were attending the Batchelder School to the Central School in Stone, which sounds unbelievable when you think about it, but it worked. And we ended up with a beautiful, brand new school right in the center of town and maintained the old Batchelder School while at the same time expanding the, the facilities there. Uh, the David's you know, greatest vision, as far as the schools were concerned, was this building, obviously. Um, he believed in it. Uh, on October 23rd, 2009, I looked this up, David, uh, Chuck Carucci, and myself went into the State House. We met with Representative Brad Jones. We met with Senator Bruce Tarr. Uh, and we met with Catherine Craven from the, sec from the Mass School Building Authority. And as a result of that meeting, as a result of David's persistence, we got on the list to get this building built. And David, once again, proved smarter than all of us. After envisioning this great project as Mel left, he left. <laughs> <laughs> he left. And he left that to us for the last eight years to get this project built. But without his vision, this, this building would not be here today, I tell you that, without preservation. So David, congratulations. It's a great honor for me to be a part of this, and, and uh, this is well, well deserved. Thank you.
tears in my eyes. <laughs> Me too. Okay. Um, so it says Dr. David S. Troughton served as the superintendent of an operating public schools from 1994 until his retirement in 2009. The hallmark of Dr. Troughton's tenure as the leader of the school district was his vision for a middle high school campus to advance the educational program for the students of the community of North Reading. The distance learning lab, I'm losing my voice. <laughs> the distance learning lab is often referred to as the crown jewel of the campus, for it is here that among its many uses, the distance learning lab serves connect students in North Reading with their peers and others across the country and the world. The dedication of the Distance Learning Lab in honor of Dr. Troughton memorializes his influence and vision for 21st century learning. Thank you. Thank you to the wonderful, notorious group. Um, this is, this is far, I don't, I don't even have my speech here yet. <laughs> oh, yeah, Gary, I will be <laughs> Every graduation. Every graduation. <laughs> but my wife, Judy, uh, didn't get to read this one. <laughs> so you're in your out of luck. <laughs> I, am, I am just truly humbled by this recognition uh, I, I just can't even begin to express my gratitude and appreciation, not only for this honor, but uh, just looking around the room and seeing so many friends and, and just people who I love and, and just the community and the school. This, this is, I've had nothing like this. I know my wife and Jerry and Mel and other school committee members said keep it to three minutes, so um, I'll do my best. Um, there's always a risk at, at leaving out um, thank yous, but I'm going to try. Uh, I just want to thank the entire community, uh, not just for the funding of these facilities, uh, this beautiful uh, building, but um, for putting up with me for 15 plus years as superintendent, for hiring me for the beginning. Um, I, I think back to that original interview in the spring, uh, and there was, I think, one person from the community, besides Mary Frances Sawyer, um, who I don't think is here today. She was the long-standing administrative assistant, but the person from the community who was there was a former student of mine, Jeff Simons, uh, uh, from Linfield. Um, so I don't know, Jeff, maybe you had something to do with uh, hiring someone from Linfield to become a North Reading uh, superintendent. But this is truly an amazing community. And I think in this day and age when um, we see such a turnover of school leaders, uh, that uh, it's all about the community. That's what pulls in. Uh, and causes uh, people who work in education to, uh, to stay and, and do this work. So thank you, North Reading. Um, I certainly want to also thank the, uh, the school committee members, both present and past, a long line of, um, of people who were elected by this community to represent uh, children, to represent the education. Uh, and while there oftentimes were uh, lots of discussions, I'll say, about uh, directions to go, um, it, it just uh, it reinvigorated me uh, to know that public education was being well served by, by school committee members. Uh, and uh, while I didn't think I was going to be able to convince uh, Jerry and Mel uh, that this was a direction, uh, and we all led in, trooped into Catherine Craven's office, and brought in Senator Tarr, as you were told, and, and um, Representative Jones, um, and we set that ball in motion. Um, I want to also thank um, superintendents um, in the past, and also current, uh, starting with Dr. O'Donoghue. Uh, as you learned, um, I came in 1994, uh, following uh, Dr. O'Donoghue, who served at this district for 24 years, uh, and, um, 
that was a that he was a very tough act to follow. Uh, but he taught me a lot, and what he taught one of the many things that he taught me was that you needed to keep in mind, always remember the legacy and the tradition of excellence, uh, and make sure that you continue that as you move forward, uh, despite all of the things that are going on with um, changes in education. Um, I want to thank Keith Manville for serving as um, interim superintendent for five or six months uh, because I left him with all kinds of paperwork and this thing called a statement of interest and all the data and I said, you know, oh my goodness, what have we done? You will figure it out. Um, and he did a marvelous job at that. And then to uh, Superintendent Kathy Willis uh, who really had to take this uh, idea uh, and uh, all of the facts and work with an architect uh, to design and put a vision in place. And then the hardest part, because I know it was the hardest part, getting the uh, community to stand behind it uh, and uh, to, to finance that. Uh, and then the, the, the sweat and the long hours of, of you know, the bricks and mortar and moving uh, middle school to the high school and all of that. So thank you, Kathy, for all of that. And lastly, to um, North Reading's current superintendent, uh, John Bernard, uh, for setting the pace for a new generation. Uh, and we're not sure where that's going to take us, but we know it's in the right direction. Um, and uh, John was much younger when he was hired as high school principal. And I think the, uh, the thing that uh, did us, and you may remember, we passed on our boats on Ossipi Lake, um, <laughs> and we tied up the channel there. Uh, and I had a long chat with John Bernard as he was going one way, and I was, we were going another way. And it's, it's been um, a friendship that's, that's lasted, and, and I'm really pleased that John is in this room. Um, I want to thank the, the members of the Secondary School Building Committee for the years and years and years and years of very hard work. Um, I want to thank uh, Jeff Simons for his skills in photography, um, his communication and cheerleading, and with all of the other parents that were part of that process. But John, I mean, uh, Jeff was, was there uh, making sure that he captured um, those images. So I'm sure that all of those images are going to be stored as with all of the other images of school projects someplace. Um, I want to thank uh, Ed Stiles, and I'm really glad to see him here today, uh, and, and Wayne Hardiker, or, uh, both um, Ed and Wayne serve uh, as, Wayne still serves as supervisor of buildings and grounds, and the technical knowledge and skills uh, you know, it isn't just about turning the boiler around anymore, and it is, you know, I, I heard from John, there's engineer for this, and the wastewater treatment plant, uh, and yet, uh, if we don't have someone who really cares about the facilities, um, it's just not going to work. I want to thank business managers, both past and present. I had the opportunity to work for many years with um, Roger uh, Young, and, and then uh, Carl Nelson, uh, and while I haven't worked with uh, Mike Connolly, uh, we do feel related to him because uh, Michael's father um, hired my wife uh, when uh, he was a principal over in, in Wilmington, uh, and she was a brand new uh, teacher. I'd like to thank the, thank the uh, school staff here in North Reading, um, from the administrators who had to sit through and endure administrative meetings after administrative council meetings after administrative council meetings, the planning and the logistics, and then particularly the staff, because that, remember that legacy, that quality of teaching, that had to be maintained, it was maintained, when we you know, disrupted elementary schools, when we moved, I can't believe, we transported 450 children to Stoneham, uh, a building that Stoneham had built a brand new school and we got to rent that building and Gene, you were part of that and others, uh, uh, just parents who came out and, and painted that classroom said we made it work uh, to uh, get the bachelor's school done. Um, and so they maintained that high quality of instruction, that legacy through all of the dust and the disruption and, and the um, relocation. I had to chuckle um, because there was a piece in the paper um, a while ago about the opening of the little school that the superintendent delayed the opening of the little school by a couple of days because it wasn't ready and teachers were still unpacking and 
I remember coming down, we came down uh, on Labor Day to uh, check the building out. It wasn't ready, and uh, I think Trish Colella was down there, you know, cleaning the floors, and um, so, you know, it takes me back. Um, so, certainly the staff. Um, and then, particularly, I like to thank Chuck, Chuck Carucci. Um, you know, as I say, the Secondary Building Committee has been it's decades, I think. You know, John tells me you're near the end. Yeah. Um, but uh, we go back to 2005, I, it was when the committee was first charged with what we're going to do. Uh, and Chuck uh, has been the chair all of that time. Uh, I'm telling you, Chuck is tenacious. Uh, <laughs> He, you know, he prods, he asks hard questions, uh, but he's got a terrific personality, and he represents, in my mind, uh, the, what, what North Reading is, is all about. So, personally, Chuck, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Uh, I, I'm not going to go through all of this, but uh, because you've already heard about the history of school building and facilities here, but I, I did come in 1994, and um, Dr. O'Donoghue retired because Ed Reform uh, was, was uh, passed, and boy, that was a lot of work. Uh, and um, so I decided to retire when it was a lot of work. <laughs> so I learned from Dr. O'Donoghue. Um, I, at that time, North Reading's enrollment was, I don't know, under 1,800 students, and over the intervening decade, it, it grew by more than 1,000 1, students. Um, so there was a space study uh, group in, in town. Uh, Dr. O'Donoghue had uh, finally succeeded in getting the town to renovate uh, North Reading High School, uh, which was a beautiful facility. There was a lot of hard work to get to that point but finally done in 89 and 90. Um, and so to think, you know, 10, 15 years later, to be thinking about a new school that was not going to happen. Um, a space study committee, um, just the years of reopening the little school, uh, getting parents and, and children to come from Hood and Bachelder and teachers and who was going to go to that other school that was closed. But we reopened the little school and then we made it larger and we tore down uh, the uh, Snack Shack, and we had a new one built, and uh, did all kinds of things over there. Um, and then the Hood, uh, and Glenn is the, the principal there, and uh, I won't go into that other school we tried to build, uh, but Bachelor School um, is just, a, as, as was said, is, is a marvelous facility, um, and just all of the work to get that, to get that done. Um, I think back, through all of this to the first fall here in 1994, the first time I ever had to speak uh, was at the dedication of the West Village Schoolhouse. Uh, the Minute and Militia had been, had reconstructed that, um, that building, which was, I think at some point, a garage or uh, located in another place, and they moved it uh, to the center of town. Um, and I, I hopefully you've been in there. It's just a, a wonderful reminder about what education, the roots of education here in North Reading. Uh, and to recreate that building, uh, I think is a testament to the legacy of uh, what, what public education means here. Um, we've, over the years, installed, uh, the district has installed, I don't know, almost 20 modular classrooms. Some of them are still hanging around, I guess. Um, and um, anyway, I just won't bore you with uh, the, the many, many meetings. But we're here today um, in, in, a, in a project that's finished. It's great. And so a lot of you might be saying, uh, and I know I ask myself this question a lot, um, because I'm still, I'm not really retired. I still continue to do work, um, as Carolyn Harris still does work uh, in, in schools. Uh, because you just can't get away from it. Um, and when you make a commitment uh, to education, uh, you make a lifelong commitment to working uh, to make uh, access for all children, all children, uh, the access to public, free public education. It's the best thing that this democratic society has. 
and it's the best work that we can do. Uh, and so building that high quality education uh, is for what, not just for educators, but for what communities invest in. Uh, because it is, it is the future. Um, and to have this facility uh, dedicated um, in my, late, my name in terms of um, distance learning to think about when you see this building, beautiful design with, with a window. And I look at that as a window to this community uh, because that's what um, not only technology is allowing us to do, but what um, learning and education does. It's a window, it's an opportunity uh, to be able to continue to expand uh, and to, to move beyond. So I thank you uh, from the deepest part of my heart uh, to uh, the recognition that you're giving me here this afternoon. So thank you, thank you. celebratory songs to uh, to celebrate you and I'm going to turn it over to them this is our uh, elite competition group they perform here in town statewide and are uh, also competi uh, competing on the national stage so
You got to go dig those holes. You got to go dig those holes. You got to go dig those holes. together.